Today we received a shipment from Alabama with the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G with no touchscreen functionality. The customer replaced the screen several times with no success. As you see, the touch has no reaction whatsoever. So we're going to conduct a proper diagnosis to get to the root of this problem. We remove the plastic plate and disconnect the battery. Then we disconnect the screen and under the microscope we're going to get a better look into the connector. From what we can see, two components are missing. So we're going to open the software diagram to see what those components are exactly. As we open the software diagram, we see that the components that are missing are two capacitors. Now, we know that the capacitors do not have the ability to disable the touch functionality, so we need to dig further to find the root of the problem. We go to the service manual and it'll give us steps we need to follow to continue with the diagnosis. Here it tells us if the touchscreen doesn't work, we need to check the connector SOC9000. Basically, it tells us to reconnect it should it be disconnected. And in this case, ours is in perfect condition, so we're going to continue with the other steps. The next step on the service manual is to check these two voltages, 3 volts and 1.8 volts, by checking these two capacitors. If the voltages do not match, then we need to replace the circuit U6002. So we go to the diagram and look for the capacitors that we need to test. We connect the battery and test out the capacitors. The first one gives us 2.9, so basically 3 volts. So that one for sure passes. We're going to go back to the diagram and see the next capacitor. It's located under a metal shield. Therefore, we remove the motherboard and extra components like the cameras and get started on removing the metal shield. We use a rotatory tool around the perimeter of the shield to remove it. If we use our heat gun, we run the risk of overheating the motherboard underneath and causing further damage. So the best option here is to use our rotatory tool. We cut out a square from the metal shield and gently spray air over the area to remove any residue. Then we reinstall the motherboard to the housing, connect the battery and power it on. With the multimeter we check the voltage and it gives us 1.79, so that's practically 1.8. We see that the voltages match the requirements, therefore we don't have to replace the circuit U6002. So let's see what's the next step according to the manual. The final step says to replace the display module, which has already been done by the customer several times. So what we're going to do is use another software diagram to research other possible solutions. This diagram shows us the connector and we can see how many pins on this particular connector are grounded. We count them individually and come up with a total of 12 grounded pins. So we place our multimeter on diode mode to check if we come up with the same amount of grounded pins. If we have more than 12 grounded pins, then we know there is a short present. As we check, many are producing 0.296 volts. But we reach this pin and it shows ground. And the pin right next to it is also showing ground. So we know this doesn't add up because the diagram did not show two consecutive pins ground. Therefore, we know the issue lies within one of these pins. We go back to the diagram and we see that this pin right here is shorted to ground and it's not supposed to be. This line that is shorted has four components attached to it. The connector, a resistor, a capacitor, and the CPU. In this case, the only two that can be shorted to ground are the CPU or the capacitor. If the short lies within the CPU, then this device will be deemed unrepairable. So our only hope of repair is that the short lies within the capacitor. We will test the capacitor and resistor to check if they are grounded. We use our multimeter on diode mode and see that it does in fact give us ground. So our next step is to remove that one capacitor. We apply flux and with our soldering iron, the capacitor is removed. And this is followed by a swift wipe with alcohol. Now that the capacitor is removed, we are going to check if the short is gone. And it's giving us a reading of 0.4 volts, which tells us the short has been removed. So we take a capacitor from a donor motherboard and install it into place. We apply flux and solder one side of the capacitor and we apply heat at 315 degrees Celsius to complete the installation. 
The capacitor is in place and we clean the area with alcohol. So we test the line to see if it all looks good. We check one last time with our multimeter and we get a point for reading. The only thing left to do is to reinstall the motherboard and battery into the housing and to bench test and hope that the touch is restored. And here it is friends, the touch has been restored. This repair has successfully been completed. And if you're looking to learn how to do these types of repairs, check out our upcoming schedule at www.cellphonerepairacademy.com. Do you have a device that needs a professional diagnosis and repair? Send it our way too. Link with details can be found in the description.